All right, folks, working on the 2010. It's a Jeep Wrangler. It's got the big 3.8, the 4x4. It needs some front axle U joints. This is pretty low mileage. I don't know what it has on it, 50K or so. Not too bad for a New Yorker. I think it probably spent a lot of time in the garage. We're gonna pull these little guys off because we're gonna reuse them to hold our rotor on. Not really necessary. You can take a little chisel and just give them a little click and a little whack and a little click and off they'll come. But we're gonna put them back on so she looks just like OEM, like we never was even here. Except the U-joint will be new. Hopefully, customer request, customer supplied parts. No diagnosis needed or wanted. We've got some other work we need to do this too. So we're gonna mark the stud. We're gonna mark the rotor so it goes back on the same spot. We're gonna leave our axle nut on for the time being. You'll see why in a moment. We're gonna take our flush cuts here. We're gonna chop off a zip tie that they've got around the brake hose and the ABS wire. Set that to the side and um, I'm going to unhook the ABS wire up here where it hooks onto the knuckle and then right down here. I don't think we're going to have to go and unplug it, but we do have to make it loosey goosey so we have some room. So that's what we did. We've got some room now. Let's get our caliper and caliper bracket off. Oh, let's see. I've got some tools sitting here. 13 mm. 3 eighths Uggy Duggy. That one came right out. And that one came right out. Even better, we'll stick those aside. That's what they look like. We're gonna pull our caliper towards us. Let it push that piston in just a little bit. I'm gonna push it in just a little bit more. Stick our screwdriver between the pad and the piston. That's what that little guy looks like. We're making a video, so we're gonna get a hook. We'll hook right up there. There, that's helpful, huh? And then we need a bigger wrench. Looks like the 21 mm. Stick that on there. Oh, they're not very tight. Oh, not too bad at all. We'll grab us a different Uggy Duggy, a half inch one. There's those, that's what them little fellas look like. All right, okay. We're gonna set this aside, we'll address any seizure issues there. Pull off the Rhoda. She's nice and clean. No rust to deal with there. There's rust to deal with here though, my guy. I'd say it needs a U-joint, what do you say? We've got our 13 mm, she's a 12 pointer. Looks smaller than 13, that one's 12, Never mind. Step back, we want the back as a 13, 12 mm. Give her some tippy tat. We're going all the way. We'll crack it loose by hand. No, we will not. Now we're gonna go down to your classic 12 millimeter, 12 point, wherever it may be. It's right here. See if we can get a little grip on it. It's a Jeep thing, you wouldn't understand. Go ahead and try me, Jeep. Tell me why in the you thought a 12 point anything was good, ever. All right, we're gonna have to man up. I just didn't want to beat my socket on there too hard. But it's a Jeep thing. Maybe that's good enough. You don't have to really bash it. I get a crack loose and you're usually good. All right, now we're good. Get out the coil or WD or water 
or whatever you want to put on the threads, whatever makes you feel good in your heart. Tap her back on a little bit. Get the, get the half inch buggy duggy. Get on her, oh yeah. Give her the no mercy reversey because the threads stick through out here. I just don't want to beat on too hard, but then once it bolts out, it gets kind of silly trying to get it off. Oh, what happened, fellas? Crack or loose force comes out all the way. There's one. Just repeat that process uh, two more times in a slightly more inconvenient position. We're going to start out with a 13 mm again. So oftentimes, if you beat her all the way home, it'll come right out. Lickety split. All the way putting the panther pee on it prior to trying to crack it loose it don't do nothing but it's on there anyways let's see here where were we <laughs> where was it day you don't ever notice it on video but the laundromat was just on fire i thought i smelled something a little funky i said hold up wait a minute something ain't right I went, out, I went outside to see what the heck was burning, and there's smoke coming out of the laundromat. So I went over, and nobody was in there, but there was a dryer that was on fire. Somebody's clothes in it were burning. I did what anybody would do. I come over here, got a five gallon bucket of water. Went over there, ripped all the clothes out. There was like a, oh, I don't know, a mattress protector, I guess one of those plastic sheets, pee pad, whatever you want to call them. That baby was engulfed, we'll say. So I got that little guy out, started stomping it out and everything else was burning. So then I called 911. We're gonna need a medic. No, I just told me we need a fire department. And then seven minutes, seven minutes later, the Avoca Fire Department was here. Two five gallon pails later, a bunch of smoke. And it's all good. Everybody lived. We all survived. I just got a bunch of burnt plastic crap on the bottom of my boot now. <laughs> and it's smoky over there and it stinks. And we're good. Oh, and then I called the guy who owned it and said, hey, you might want to come over here. And he was glad. I couldn't tell because there was so much smoke coming out of the vent outside. I knew they were the dryer vents on the outside of the building, but I don't know how that's designed back in the walls, if the smoke was in the walls or if it was just what it was. So now I just come back here and mind my own business. The wind was blowing wrong anyways. If that place burned up, it would have got my building, so. Mm. Something ain't right. This one's real springy. And feel like she wants to go. So anyhow, that's what I've been up to. Oh, you mother lover. <sighs> Anyways, I'm gonna work on this for a while. We're gonna beat that 12 on there. and Feels like she's coming out hard all the way. If they give you a hard time, just cut the heads off from here. Get the torch and just let her rip. I'm gonna take that off. Let's try, uh, so a half inch is in between 13 and 12, but the only 12 points I have are 3H drive. 
There, that goes on a little bit. Let me get a long 3 8 ratchet. Oh boy. Boy. This guy sure makes some funny faces. Probably should put a little heat on the outside of this thing. Grab old Vic. Come here, old Vic. Let's put a little bit of heat on the outside of the knuckle. Here I am, thinking I'm living right, working on something with no rust. We're using your uh, Lyle 40100 hub remover. It's this little guy. What we want to do is just stick it up here and uh, get this fairing to crack loose. I'm going to go into the phone. Mrs. O's not here at the moment. Never mind, it was just a YouTuber. Grab our forcing screw, it's all slobbery from the first time we used it. Stick that baby through. Now when I did the one on the other side, I made a little video using this little guy. And these bearings, as I mentioned in that video, typically come off quite easily. Come on, don't leave a message. Okay, goody, hold on. Um, as I mentioned in that video, they come off quite easily, so I wouldn't typically promote pushing against the caliper bracket hole. Um, th this one is cast iron. They're quite sturdy and we're going to give it just a little push. Push, push, push. Get her wound in there. We're just going to give it a handy because we don't want to hit real hard. Leave the nut on, trust me. Oh, that boy. All right, we did it. Look at us. So we got our crack loose. We'll just take these off. I ain't gonna bore you with everything else. The washers tend to stick on that thing. There we go. Stick these back in the box. Boy, I used the tool just this couple times. So far, so good. And the reason, in case you haven't seen the first video, maybe I never even put it out, I don't know. The reason you leave the nut on there is if this little guy was really stuck, then um, keeps you from ripping the outer face off the bearing here. 36-ish. I've got a half inch uggy duggy right here. Hang on, I gotta get, you, get up around you. Whoa, easy. <laughs> Ain't really the impact for she's a little lightweight. Mm. All right, there we go. Good job, fellas. Now, ideally, we'd this would be it. The show would be over. We'd set this to the side. We wouldn't even have to unhook the feed sensor wire. But being this ding dong, can't believe that freaking bolt broke off in there. Like, what's that all about? You can see where I heat her up a little bit, but apparently I wasn't watching it enough. So let's pull our axle out. Come here, wee! Let's see if we can't fix this screw up here. Wiggle this around till we think we got her about in the middle. Looks to be about center. All right. Close enough, anyways. Whoa, easy. easy. Oh, 
All right, that was 3 16th. We're going to bump her up another size here. Let's see, we'll probably go like 3 8 See how close that gets us. Might be a little off center here. I'm gonna drop down a couple sizes. We'll go 11 30 seconds. I just, if we get this out, I just don't wanna hit the threads. Let me quit being a ding dong, just lock this in the vise. So I drilled her all the way through. I was hoping it was going to be thin enough on the edge here to maybe just knock it in. But I don't know. Uh, actually, I think it is. I'm going to go get a smaller punch. I think it's working. No, that little thin... I mean, it's just that thin little sleeve of, of the bolt that's left in there. You know, of course, the threads, too. I uh, cannot get that sucker to, to break away. So, last ditch effort here real quick. We just buy a new bearing. Sometimes when it's this thin, like, you just touch it with some heat and they just disappear. Uh, actually let me let that cool down for just a second yeah it's not it's not smoking hot i'll let that cool down we'll give her just a tap and see if the rest of that slag now will just come out of there and leave us the threads i think i like 90 percent of it but there's just a couple little pieces of slack that won't flake off I don't want to get into, I don't want to dig into the threads. I just don't know why it won't, why it won't flake off. Usually you do that and you're home free. So we'll give her some, some tap oil. 12175, I believe these are 12175. If not, that's what they're going to be. We'll, we'll check this one. Usually a thread chaser is a little better to use. There we go. Yeah, yeah, they're twelve one seven five. What we'll try and do, we'll run it through all the holes, but we'll see if we can't get it to kick out this slag here and get it to start in a known good thread. Probably not the best option here, but I just need it to. There it goes. Oops, kicked out a piece there. Because right now the threads are intact. There's just a little bit of slag. Old Vic sitting there. We go. There's another piece. I just need something to flick them off there. It sounds terrible here with the tap going through there, but let's see if that sounds like it cracks more of them loose. Oh good, it got rid of the big booger. There we go. See, so it doesn't usually take much. Usually uh, when you cut through there with the torch, usually they'll pop right loose on you. But you gotta have it pretty dang thin to go in there. You know, if you're trying to blow a, a bolt out of a hole once you've already drilled it, if you go in there with a the torch, make sure you got it really thin. Okay, I think we'll be in good shape. I'm gonna get some actual grease here, something a little more slippery than that. Just run the tap down through it. I'll show you guys when we're finished, but there's just one more little piece right down there at the bottom, but I think we're in good shape. Threw over in the sandblaster, just got the rust off, you know, where we gotta put it on anyways, but you can see, well, I don't even know which hole it was now. Uh, maybe it was this one. I know it's one next to the speed sensor, so 
all the, well, I don't know if you guys can see or not, but holes are all in good shape. Uh, we didn't end up hitting any threads. Yeah, it must have been this one because it's got a few little pecker tracks up there from my chisel. But um, ran a uh, uh, tap down through there and a thread chaser and everybody's good. Um, up to you whether or not you fix them. I mean, if you can do them in just you know a few minutes, drill it out and then you know tap it out. Looks like looks like a little bomb went off over here, but it really wasn't it wasn't too terrible. Um, I already have new bolts for it. I had the customer get new bolts because I knew that these you know 12 point headed bolts are garbage. Usually you can't get a good bite on them. <laughs> that one we did. We got a good enough bite to do what we had to do. But this is the hole that we just did right there. So yeah, typically these aren't a problem. Usually if there's a problem, it's a problem up here or where they seize right there, but usually they don't seize up down, you know, down here, down yonder. But it's all good, crisis averted. I'll never even know what happened. We are a little secret. You guys don't tell anybody, I won't tell anybody. It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna come clean, man. So that's what that looks like. I don't know if, uh, if any of it matters to you, but that's the piece that was on the inside. I had some slag on it. That's basically the bolt that we drilled out, and it's the little you know, bit that's left in there. And if you just drill it paper thin, oftentimes, like I say, you just take the chisel and give it a little tippy tap. But sometimes you just reach in with a torch and just, you know, get the one side. You know, you can see I, you know, I got this side here, but it just more or less melted it together. But anyhow, that's that. Keep on keeping on. We're gonna take and do this U joint a little differently. Because people ask me all the time why I don't do it like, like we're gonna do it. And I'll tell you, because I don't, that's why. There's my answer to you, because it can be dangerous. A, uh, cutting them out with a torch it can be dangerous in the sense that it can explode and blow your face off. Uh, and don't do it just because the U-joint sees. Don't think that it can't hold pressure because it can. Um, so that, that's why it's dangerous. And the other thing is too, I see people do this. They cut it, you know, cut it here, cut it here, cut the cross out, okay? And then they take and beat the caps out of it and just smash these ears right together. So I'll show you how to do it properly. <laughs> Use my little claw fingers. Uh, as properly as you can doing it with a torch. So this is a way to change a U-joint. I like to use a torch for just about everything. When you're cutting it, cut it like this so it blows away from your face or at least at your buddy. That's how I do them. If you're cutting it on the inside, if it does pop, it'll get you. It'll get you. Oh, you jerk. Amateur hour. center of that cross. So I said make sure you're cutting away from that. I've seen some of them blow out a big old gob of fire and grease. So 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Doing a burnout. And just because you cut through one side of the craw and heard it pop doesn't mean the other side ain't going to get you. Don't be fooled. Idiot, man, this guy can't win. Plug that sucker right up. Stuck it right down in there, I felt it. Okay, we're good. We still got flameage. These little ones are tough to get in there. Don't step on those with your boots. You'll be dancing if you do. So then, go like this, hold it. Don't, don't weigh on these ears, just tap like that. You get the centers to fall out. Okay, so once that one falls out, set that down. Reach down, hold on your bench, get your other one. Careful, she might be toasty. Before you grab right over, she's a little toasty. Like this like that. Tippy tap. Give it a little tippy tap like that. What's up, Andy? Old Vic, he's over here. We're cooking. We're showing the people you jointing. Hey, where were you today, man? I 911 the fire department and you're not even here. I know I listened to it. I listened to it on the You heard my 911 call? Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I'm I was like, I need a medic. I was, oh no, we oh. can't actually hear this. Oh, well, that's too bad. I'm sure it was entertaining. Yep, I put the fire out myself. Did you? Yeah. Burnt my foot. Were you the one with exposure that said? I heard it's so, one exposure. That was you. That was me. Okay. I was the sole guy. I got everybody out of there. You did? I need everybody I'm out. Back. Yeah. It was <laughs> It was pretty yeah, awesome. You look so charred. Yeah. Well, I burnt the bottom of my shoe. You did? I'd show you, but it it's difficult to show you. Turn it out? Yeah, it does. Sure you uh, do it just now with that torch and you're trying to take credit for the hero? No, I. <laughs> I mean, that's what I would do. Does it. <laughs> well, it's going to be a little noisy over here. Oh! The guy Josh has a fan on. So these usually will come out pretty easy. Get your safety napkin now. Don't you're gonna be tempted to do this, put it up here and you know, wham 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 whack on it. Don't, whatever you do, make sure you stick it in the vise or something like this. That way when we hit on it, we're not tempted or we're not gonna spread the ears, you know, as we're hitting it, whacking it together. If that makes sense to you. Alright. Hopefully it does. Stick a block of wood under there. This one already started coming loose. There's two. Stick this one up here.
coming. But didn't stop it. All right. Crisis averted. Stuff's a little toasty, so be careful. Maybe put on some gloves. Customer brought us your classic 371 from you know Hoog. My personal favorite, Spicer. Woo. These are the non-greasable variety. So we're gonna peel our caps off. Always have a look to make sure A, there's grease in the cap, and B, that when you pull it out, there's not a needle laying in the bottom. Because you don't know who's been in the package, you know what I mean? We're gonna slip her in there. Cap there. Don't whack on the end of this sucker, okay? Very lightly. Open up our package. Hey man, you got a nice package. There we go. Are any of them through far enough? Mm, negative. Let's uh, just be sure. Make sure your clip can go. Push. Tap for good luck. I don't know if this one's still warm, probably. Stick her up here. Can you guys still see? Slip her in. <laughs> still, a little, still a little toasty. Not hot, just a little uncomfortable. Stick that down there. Give her a little light baby taps. Before we go all the way with that one, let's get our clip in on this side. Now you gotta make sure that your clip isn't down over the casting. There's a little notch down here. If you get it down there too far, then you're in trouble. Well, you're not in trouble, you just gotta put it back where it belongs. Get her all the way. Let's make sure. Oops, whoa, 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 whoa. almost center flying. Come on. Now I want to give her a little more love tap. One more little love tap. Just to be sure. Well, that feels good now. As long as it feels good in the groove. You're good. Tap it back that way. Oh, we don't even have to give it a couple good luck taps. And there you are, Mr. Floppy. And that's it, that's how to put your U-joint in your axle. So, pretty easy. That's using the cutting torch method. Like I say, which is fine. As long as you're not tempted to, you know, really wail on it and uh, get these ears squished together, because then you're in big trouble. In big trouble, mister. Now we're going to take Mr. Flappy. Oh, we still got to drill in first gear. Put her in second gear.
Okay, this thing's still, can we touch it yet? She's still a little toasty. I'm gonna bring this in. Stick your hand under here. And this is called the guided in, okay? It's a pretty clutch move. There, that's all the way. Let's get the fluid film. All right, there's that. We've got the new bolts. I had to customer get new bolts because the 12 point ones usually go crazy. There's your Dorman number, all right? You got three new bolts. If you get these OEM, they're gonna come back. They're gonna be 12 point. Uh, what in the frig is going on out there? All right, not a big deal. <laughs> Just some neighbors over there fighting uh, a couple chicks. So we stayed right out of that. Didn't hear any gunshots, so we're pretty good. Now I got some ding dong leaving a message on the machine there. Even though it says don't leave a message, if you're calling because you saw a video on YouTube, we will not call you back. It says that very clear, plain as day. But what that means is that means you start your message by saying, I know it says don't leave a message, but I'm gonna leave one anyways. <laughs> Which I always think is kind of funny. And then I just delete it. But anyhow, we're gonna take fish some wires through. We're gonna give this a little spritz so she doesn't get stuck in there the next time. We got the bolts in there. We're gonna wiggle our bolts through. We'll get all them started and then we're gonna torque them to factory specs. As usual. Wiggle that baby all the way in. Stick our hub nut on there. All right. Let's see, do we got everything going the right way? Yes, we do. So we're gonna jam these babies down. 75 pound-feet of torque. Check the other one when I straighten her out. We should be good. We'll get our ABS wire. Kind of fish that back through here. There's a bracket that it the wire goes in. Come on, little fella. Come on, little fella. There's that. And then we'll get this one here. And then once we put the caliper on, we'll thread it the rest of the way. But there's our U joint. Spins around. Very nicely. I've already done the one on the other side. There we go. So there's that. We'll spritz her with the fluid tone being that we sandblast it off. The rust. Hopefully keep her from rusting up so quick. Backs of our bolts. Yeeha. There's no rust chunks on that. Everything looks pretty smooth. We're gonna give her one of those. Grab our rotor. Make sure the inside's clean. And it is. Then we gotta spin it around. Line up your paint marks. Get these little guys. We'll push them back on. Do we have anything to push them on with? I won't go all the way. No, these don't go all. They don't go all the way. There, that'll hold it for us. So now we got to take and put our uh, brake caliper bracket back on there. Hey. I'm gonna take the hey. top, Andy. Oh, what you got there? On behalf of the Evoke Fire Department, we'd like to thank you, appreciate you for what you've done today for our village. Our town, our community. Junior fireman. This is pretty awesome. 
Beautiful. It almost fits. Be careful. If you go running back in a burning building like that again, that thing's gonna melt right to your forehead. <laughs> Just like it did on the bottom of my shoe here. But yeah. that's all right, Andy. I'm ready for anything. Oh, you see the back of my yeah, head? I have it right there. A bunch of stitches. Yeah. Ten of them. Wow, there's ten on the outside. There's maybe ten on the inside too. Yeah. I'm not gonna sit sit. No. You remember that that lump I had on the back of my head? No, I haven't really. Never see it. Why well, I had like a little lump. And then I went to I've had it for years. And they want I want to chop it off. Did you tell the people about this already? No, I didn't. They don't they haven't seen my scar. Oh. I can show them. So it's back there. I don't know if they can see it. You can't even see what it is. Oh yeah, you got it in the front. Okay. Yeah. Got a little plaque psoriasis ah. going on. Got some hurt. stitches. It's a little tender. Plaque psoriasis? Yeah. I'm gonna try to Google that. You have to Google it. It's yeah. with a P. Which part? The psoriasis. The P. The P <laughs> but anyhow, I went to the like, doctors. Okay. And he I said, You want me to chop it off? So mm. we got out, we numbed her up, cut her open, all the way to the skull. This Ooh. is all watched. Oh. And I knew it was getting, wait, I'm gonna move this. My hair, I've been wearing a hard hat all day. Is it flat? It's good. Am I going bald? Is it getting thin? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, I went in there, he cut her deep. Mrs. O was watching. And I could tell it was getting a little tense back there because she just had her hand on my leg. I feel it getting a little tighter. I'm like, what's going on back there? Not really it was kind of weird like because you can't feel it, but you can hear him because I was awake and then you hear him kind of ripping the flesh away <laughs> like as he's pulling this thing out it looked like a chunk of chicken fat is what it looked like really yeah it was just like an encapsulated thing of fat it was you know it's nothing just no big deal nope and now it's gone and then well, it was pretty is deep still just swelling now is yeah it's, yeah, it it's just all, out like that it's all swelled up so hopefully there's some doctors in the comment section <laughs> well I, I was gonna max. record it but doctors get all weird when you want to record stuff <laughs> He was making Real jokes. Practice, all that yeah. yeah, right. So, and then they cauterize it because there's lots of blood and then sew it up on the inside, sew it up on the outside. And adios. Nice. So that's what happened. So yeah, that's another thing that's happened. Man, what a day. Yeah. Wait, this wasn't today. This was two days ago. Oh man, what a week. Yeah. Wow, junior fireman. All right. Yeah, so I had to have that thing cut off my head. It's not a big deal. Just a chunk of chicken fat I don't know what it's really called pilar cyst or something I don't know it was something but it's gone now but now it's all it's all swelled up I don't think it's infected we'll find out but I guess I got some thick skin back there Miss O said it was pretty deep It's kind of a weird feeling when you can hear them cutting away the flesh. But you can't see it. You can only kind of feel them like tugging and cutting and stuff like that. Anyhow, I got this baby sandblasted out. And uh, get her freed up here. Put the pads back the way you had them. Squeak her on the inside. They weren't really super seized, but being that we had these apart we want to make darn sure everybody's happy here all right let's go put this baby on excitement around this place to me there's that get our bolts lined up we'll get the torque spec Once you get those torqued to spec, grab your caliper, unhook it from the hooky. You still got a little grease on your marker. It's not a marker, it's a paintbrush on your acid brush. I don't know why they call them acid brushes, but that's what they're called. We'll get a little bit more on there. We'll get it on the piston. It's on the piston. Grab the bolts. Slip her down. Make sure your pins are free. These pins are nice and free and still greasy. All right, look in there. Even though we're not doing a brake job, we're, we're still going all the way. 
But that little guy in there, that little guy in there, grab your wrench. Oh man, do I stink today? Woo! Keep thinking somebody's following me around. I'm like, man, who stinks? And it's me. So we're gonna torque them down 20 some odd foot pounds, 20, between 20 and 30 usually. Or just a little, you know, like, like that, just like that, you know what I mean? Not crazy, just snug. Then we'll bring our wire and we'll run that background. Now the customer had a couple of zip ties on this, which I don't, I don't think that's real necessary. I'll probably put them back on. He probably thought they were necessary for something. So we'll, uh, we'll put them back on. Usually, I mean, this has stock tires, stock lift. Nothing's, nothing's modified on it. So we'll, this is kind of a pisser to plug in behind this shock tower, but we'll get her plugged in here. Oh, I hardly stand the smell of myself. Where's my light? One hundred pound feet of torque on that little fella. That's it. Shows over. So that's it, folks. Weird day downtown Boca. Nothing ever happens here. Lots of things are happening today. But that's uh, maybe it's a full moon. I don't know. Um, one thing I do know is that we're done with this. We've got the front axle U joints in it. Everything is torqued and spec. It turned out good. The job went well and without much difficulty. Oh, I guess no. Yeah, well, I don't know. That bolt broke, but that's not a huge ordeal. I don't take it how you want. <laughs> but uh, I gotta keep on keeping on. We got a lot of stuff to finish here before the end of the day. We only got a couple hours left. And uh, I've gotta do the rear axle bearings and stuff in this thing too, or seals. Ultimately the bearings, whatever, you know. Comment section, questions, comments, the NCD, on Facebook. And now you know about the lump of chicken fat on my head and that I have psoriasis. So hope you're all happy. I know I am. And uh, just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.